Welcome back, everyone, and thank you very much to Tom for his first keynote. I'm now going to invite on stage Kelly Rank from Central London Community Trust, who will give us an insight into patient engagement in a community setting. So I'm Kelly Rank. Um, I am a senior program manager, as Netta described, at Central London Community Healthcare. Um, and I'm here today basically to talk about my um, experience around patient engagement and my passion for it. So um, I did kind of question myself as to why they'd invited me to come along today. Um, I think partially because I've obviously worked with Dr. Docs now at two different trusts, um, so I've built some relationships with them, and I think they can see my passion for patient engagement and generally kind of, you know, working as a, as a team. Um, I've worked in the NHS now for almost 17 years, and I have worked at a number of acute providers, um, community providers, I've worked in a variety of different departments, um, from finance to IT to operations, and I think all of that experience um, has kind of stood me in good stead for the position that I carry out today, which is ultimately <clears throat> to try and improve the experience that our patients have. Underneath all of that, though, I'm a patient. You're all patients. At some point in our lives, we're going to require the support of a healthcare professional, whether that's in the NHS, in the private sector, um, we are going to need it. And I think for me, None of us would choose to be patients. And whilst in every industry, you know, customer service is paramount to what, what you know, retail and all the other industries that deliver, it should be what we hold at the forefront of our um, ambitions and goals as well. So why is patient engagement so important to me? So I've just explained about who I am, um, the fact that I'm a patient, my family are patients. Um, my younger brother is, um, has got special needs. And quite often, I not only have to be a patient myself, but I have to be an advocate for him as a patient. And it's not until you're in a situation like that where you experience just how difficult it can be for a person to communicate with a health provider or for a person to feed back on you know, their experience and you have to do it for them, that you actually realise how important it is to get it right. So there's been situations in, in my past where I've had to you know, step in for my brother to, to make sure that his voice or lack of voice is listened to, but also to ensure that anything that, you know, is being presented to him is understandable. So transferring that into my role, we're about to embark on embedding Doctor Doctor's patient led booking solution into our organisation. <clears throat> and one of the things that um, I'm quite passionate about is making sure that, as Tom, you know, very eloquently described earlier, we've got there's a lot of you know, pros and benefits to the system in terms of in, um, improving DNA rates, improving you know, patients' journey through the hospital, improving the clinician's experience. But one of the things that Tom didn't mention that I know that the company are passionate about, but I am also passionate about, is about making sure that whatever solution we do introduce or implement is best for the patient. Now, I know, for example, my brother wouldn't be able to use a digital platform to reschedule an appointment or to manage his, his care. So it's really important for me that whatever platform we introduce is appropriate for the audience now in terms of how we then engage our patients that's it how do we do that so for example i've set up a, a patient forum um, at clch which is about to embark on its first mm -hmm. session um, and we're hoping to get a really eclectic group of people there so it's not just you know the bog standard patient reps that attend every single meeting but actually we've got a real you know wide, widespread um inclusion of, of patients of different levels and different abilities and different desires. Um, working in the community trust sector now, it's very, very different to the acute sector. Um, a lot of the patients that we have don't choose to be our patients, don't want to be our patients, but they, they need our care. So it's just as important for them to be listened to and to have their opinions, their desires and their needs addressed as it is for a patient who attends an acute trust for something that they potentially want to have done. So I think for me, it's all about inclusion. It's about making sure that as much as the, the wants and desires of the trust are answered, that the wants and desires of the patients are also addressed. Um, and I think I'm hoping that as operational leaders within the NHS, me and my colleagues can start to really embrace that and work with companies like Dr. Doctor <clears throat> to, to really kind of you know, embrace the opportunities that we have at our fingertips. So having said all of that, <clears throat> nothing comes easily and I think the challenges that, that we all face around patient engagement vary greatly between you know the, the type of patient we're looking at, the cultures, the religions, the geographic location, there's a whole great raft of, of different um, 
contribute and factors that make it challenging. But for me, the three key things I think that we all need to try and work to address together is the time. So in the NHS, you know, we don't have a, an endless pot of money, an endless pot of resource where we can just, you know, throw a team of people to go and, you know, embark on a, on a patient engagement um, session. However, <clears throat> I think it's knowing that the time that you spend doing this is always investment because that little bit of time that you spend asking someone's opinion, getting feedback on how they feel, showing them a system and making sure that it's right from the, from the off is investment for the future because it saves you time down the line correcting your mistakes. Um, I think also it's around inclusion. So we know that, as I said before, patient forums, we often have them and we often have lots of people that come to them, but it's the same people that come each time. And so that feedback that we get is quite biased sometimes. So I think it's about how do we include as many different and varied um, patients from our, our different and varied areas that we work in. Um, I don't have the solution, I wish I did, but I think it's really important that we don't lose sight of that and we don't just treat engagement as a tick box exercise, that we actually use it as an opportunity and see it as an investment. Um, I did put a little slide, a little um, diagram on here around an ear. So, as I said, it shouldn't be tick box. It should be a case that we actually use this as an opportunity and see it as investment. Too often, we we listen to people, but we don't hear what they're saying. So I've, I've run events before where, you know, you have a, a patient forum, for example, and you ask their opinion on something and you're looking around the room for approval and looking around the room for agreement as to what you're suggesting is right. Whereas actually, in some respects, in this, this time round, we're going to go in there with a much more open mind and actually say, what do you want? Rather than this is what you've got, what do you think? So I think it's just really about kind of looking at it slightly differently and ultimately was putting yourself in the patient's shoes. Because for me, we're all here to hopefully, you know, embed a better organisation and healthcare system into the country. But ultimately, we're all going to need to use it one day. So I think it's really important that we do always consider that when we're um, looking at how we engage our patients and take their feedback. But that was all I had to say for today.